We were trying to learn about the effects of air pollution um, that occurred early in life, what impact it might have on development of the brain and on behavioral consequences. What we found very unexpectedly uh, was that in the males, there's an enlargement of the ventricles of the brain, which is part of the circulatory system of the brain, if you will, where molecules come in and feed the brain and toxins are removed from the brain. The reason that was alarming to us is because what's called ventriculomegaly um, can be seen in humans. It can have very pronounced behavioral consequences. Initially, our first observation, it was just one, a single animal, a single brain, um, but that prompted us to go back to all of the other studies and start quantifying the ventricles of animals that had been exposed um, over the previous three years. There's air pollution everywhere. There's very large, coarse particles that you take up through the nose or you can actually swallow, and those aren't considered as much of a problem because the body has ways to get rid of those. But as the particles get smaller and smaller, they become more of a problem. Uh, and when they get less than 100 nanometers, so very, very small, those are considered the most toxic because they can reach the deepest parts of the lung and from there they get into the bloodstream. It causes a kind of inflammation. That kind of inflammation in the blood can actually cause inflammation in the brain. EPA regulates two sizes of particles, what's called the 2.5 p.m. particle size and the 10 uh, particulate matter size. So those are just slightly larger than the ultrafine particles, which are less than 100 nanometers. The ultrafine particles are considered to be the most toxic, but that isn't actually what's directly regulated. The most striking finding was a slide of a series of sections showing the ventricles uh, of an animal that were clearly very, very enlarged, and there is a white matter tract there called the corpus callosum uh, that's supposed to be developed. It connects the two sides of the brain, and you really need that to uh, be able to function properly, was e either had not developed or had developed and disappeared. We measured the ability of these animals to learn a new sequence of responses every day. We saw deficits in that. And we used a short-term uh, memory test and saw in both males and females, we saw deficits in that. I think one of the most outstanding findings of the study is the male-specific increases in lateral ventricles of the animals that have been exposed to the pollution. Um, in humans, that has a consequences for neurodevelopment and has been implicated in multiple neurodevelopmental disorders such as schizophrenia and autism. There were already studies in human populations, epidemiological studies, looking at the association between air pollution and diagnosis of autism that had already reported associations or correlations. This may provide the kind of biological plausibility, these findings that we see of ventriculomegaly, we see it only in males, autism and schizophrenia are both disorders that are more prevalent uh, in males or in boys than in girls. Uh, so we may have found a model that provides some kind of biological plausibility for those associations. Air pollution might be a significant contributor to autism. We really do need to think about somehow regulating to a greater extent the air pollution, either more regulation in terms of ultrafine particles or even the levels of PM 2.5 and 10, because it may be that the levels that we're currently looking at are, are too high.